Hi, everybody. I'm Blishiness. This is Otto. It's a cute little Metroidvania from a couple years ago. Uh, we're going to be playing with no major glitches, and I'll talk about what a minor glitch looks like. And we're going to be playing on assist, which is the lowest difficulty. Now, the first few minutes have a lot of speed tech, so please just bear with me for like three, four minutes. I'll probably also talk faster than I should because I'm a little nervous. Uh, but after that, it'll cool down a little, and we can relax with our fun cat game. So time starts when we fade to black here in three, two, one, go. Okay, uh, this is Shin. He's our cat samurai that we're going to be controlling. Uh, his movement has a lot of stopping. If he swings us around the ground, he stops moving. So for these targets, we're going to jump up to, to hit them before we swing. And also jumping up pushes us into the air a bit. So for these targets, we don't even need to break them to get, break those blocks. We can just pop up right all, over those blocks. Uh, so like I said, he has a lot of pauses. When he swings to the left or right, uh, he has a two-hit combo, and then he pauses again before he can swing again. And also, we're going to pick up the roll or the dodge in a second. Uh, that's our wife. We're not going to see her anymore. Bye. Uh, and when, after he rolls, he again pauses for a bit. So it's not as fast as you'd like it to be. But fortunately, there's a way around all of that. And it's called Roll Jump Slash, or RJS. And it's exactly what it says on the tin. You press roll, and then jump, and then slash. And you fling yourself across the map. Uh, you have no pauses anywhere. And it also increases our DPS for our first boss fight here, Rogue. Um, if you RJS after you do your two swings, you refresh your swings and can do it again. Rogue is a pretty straightforward fight. Uh, he'll hop on that hook for a second phase. If we knock him with one of those projectiles, he'll stagger. Uh, we want to not juggle him. I'll talk about why in a second. Uh, you may have noticed at the end there, there was some slow motion after we actually killed Rogue. Uh, the in-game timer, which we use for timing this game, does not slow down during slow motion, nor does real life time, which you may know as time. Um, so we want to skip that slow motion if we can, and we can by hitting the enemy again after they're already dead during that slow motion cutscene. And the easiest way to do that is once again the roll jump slash. So roll jump slash do just does everything you want it to do. That power is a lock on. We're going to use it now to lock onto these pegs to platform around the game. And we're also going to use it during combat to stagger enemies. And I'll talk about that in a second for our next boss after this minor glitch here, the map jump. If you press map and jump on the same frame, then Shin gets an additional jump. Uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, this tablet is a checkpoint. Uh, after we pick up our next upgrade, we're going to save quick back to that tablet. Uh, and here's Jin at the next boss. So Jin is basically a tutorial on how to use lock on. Uh, bosses flash white before certain attacks, and also uh, if you hit them enough without getting hit yourself. And then if you lock onto them while they're flashing white, they get staggered into the air. And Jin in particular then just sits on the ground uh, for a while doing absolutely nothing. Uh, so you can really just pile damage into him. I take a little slow at the end of boss fights just to make sure I get the slow motion cancel. It's definitely faster to slow down your DPS just a little bit to make sure you get the slow motion cancel because it lasts for so long. Um, but anyway, if you lock onto an enemy when they're flashing, they do stagger, and then you can uh, you can juggle them around if you want. However, you even though you can in theory juggle them indefinitely, they'll stop taking damage after a while. So in most cases, we don't want to juggle enemies at all, given how hard it is also to chase them around the map while they're bouncing from being juggled. And so that's our double jump. And we're going to save quick back here to take the other route that we couldn't take earlier because we didn't have a double jump. Um, some of the later bosses will sort of recover after a stagger, after they get hit enough in a stagger in a, during a juggle. So And when they recover, they reset their hit count. And here's a skip. Uh, if we. We can only lock on once in midair, but if we roll at just the right time above that peg, we can lock on to this. We get just enough hang time to lock onto the peg above it, uh, which lets us skip the next boss that guards the upgrade that actually lets you lock on twice in midair. We're still going to go back for that upgrade, uh, but we're just going to get this checkpoint and then turn around and grab it rather than actually find the boss, who's very slow. He's a big panda bear with a shield. Very, very slow. This is a coin. They're optional pickups. We're not going to pick up any of them. They open gates. None of the gates have anything good behind them for any percent. Uh, given how many coins it takes to open just about anything. Uh, so there's a double lock on, and we're going to save quick back to this area. And then this area is basically a lot of walking, a lot of platforming for our next boss. Um, the only new things are these crumbling blocks. If you've played platformers, you know how these work. Uh, we're going to do another map jump in this room. And then in the next couple rooms, we're going to see blocks that move when you hit them. So we're going to use those to do platforming. But other than that, this section is not super interesting. So we actually have some time for donations here as we watch our next boss steal our next power up, which is extraordinarily rude. Definitely rude, but we can uh, counter that with some donations here. How about uh, $250 from Ray Haha, who said, Glitchy, thanks for introducing me to GDQ, and I'm so excited to be here in person to watch your run today. Good luck, Samurai Cat Game. I love you. 
Thanks, Ria. Love you. Absolutely. We got time for one or two more? Uh, yeah, we can act uh, actually, let's wait until the next boss here so I can you talk about it. these warp points. Sorry about that. But we're going to pick up a Shinto gate here, which will be a warp point for later, uh, which is why we turned around at that tablet. When we open a square on the map with a gate here, we can warp to it from any other gate. Uh, and for this one in particular, since we save put after it, we have to uh, we have to walk in front of it to get the auto save. Some of the other gates will just enter the room and then leave immediately. But for that one, we have to walk into it. Uh, here's our next boss, Ninja. Um, oop, did not trigger the fight. Uh, Ninja will not kill you on assist. Assist is all the bosses do very low damage, and we won't die until much later. Um, but Ninja is so extraordinarily bouncy that uh, he's just going to take away all your time. Uh, you can hit your shuriken back, his, uh, his shuriken back at him, but as far as I can tell, it doesn't do too much damage. Uh, and I still have not figured out the optimal way to stagger him or not to stagger him. Um, but we want to kill him on the right side, which we did. Um, since his body drops the next power-up we need, and then we need to run over to the right. Uh, this is the sprint. If you hold lock on in a direction, you'll run. Uh, it lets you break blocks. Uh, but in a lot of cases, it's slower than RJSing or our next movement tech, um, since there is like a wind up to actually running. So we're, not, we're actually not going to sprint that much. Normally, you get so excited in a speed run to find the fast movement. Uh, but the fast movement is just not as fast as what you get 50 seconds in. Um, so we're going to run here to grab another gate. And then we're going to save put back to that tablet and finish up the prologue. So this whole section has been the prologue. It's been really linear. Um, I mean, we've turned around for gates, and we could have gotten some optional pickups, but all the major upgrades are basically in a line. And after we defeat this next boss, the game's really going to open up and actually be you know, a Metroidvania with pads and everything. Uh, this is Acolyte. He's also pretty bouncy, not quite as bouncy as Ninja. He won't jump over you, as far as I can tell, so he's a little less bouncy. So we are just going to pin him into the corner. And for this one, I'm pretty sure we do not want to uh, stagger him at all. Again, just because of how much enemies fly around while being juggled. Like, I'd rather tank hit, since he won't kill us. Uh, this is a super attack that he's charging up that we can't dodge. Hopefully I can kill him before we he gets there. I did. And there's our baby. We saved him. And here's the Kitsune demon that wants to eat our baby, question mark. Uh, the game doesn't have text, so I'm not too sure about the lore. Um, but this fight is not winnable, so we have to just die. But fortunately, the timer stops. Uh, real life timer doesn't stop. Uh, but hopefully, we should die pretty quick. I'm just going to run to the left here so that I can be running coming out of this cutscene. And now the world is very sad. This is what used to be the, the fun pink pretty area at the start of the game. It's now gloomy and rainy because the demon has wreaked total devastation on the world in search of our one baby. Um, but fortunately, a kindly monk nursed us back to health after we got annihilated by the demon. And now we're going to go find him to get the upgrade that actually lets us uh, navigate the world. Uh, so after this, this, this lets us break these blue blocks. That's all it does. But the blue blocks are everywhere. Um, after this, we're actually going to get our first attack that's not a sword slash. We're going uh, to get our first spell. Uh, the monk tells us in so many words, because again, no text, that there are three orbs scattered around the world that will unlock the shrine that he's been guarding. And each of these orbs is behind a spell, and each of these spells is just good of their own accord. So we're going to go immediately get the dive, the down spell, which is not guarded by a boss, which is why we just run to grab it immediately. Um, when we pick up Dive, we'll get a magic meter. We get three bars of magic to start. Dive costs two bars of magic. Magic charges up very slowly over time or faster if you hit enemies or if you transition rooms. Uh, dive is great because Dive is another jump. Uh, I don't, why does Dive going down make another jump? Well, Shin has a wind-up animation uh, that goes up, and you can cancel the Dive during that animation, which just means that you get another jump, uh, which is way more useful than the actual uh, intended uses of dive. It does a lot of damage when you land, but Shin also gets stunned in the ground when you land, so you don't really want to use it for damage. The DPS kind of slows down there. Um, and it, it's progression. It like, breaks some blocks, but not super important. Here's our first usage of dive as a platforming. You just can do a lot of little nifty stuff like that to move around faster. This red area, I'm going to grab that gate. Goodbye, gate. And then we're going to fight our next boss to get our next spell. Uh, this is the child, this ghostly apparition you can't hit. So you have to just do this platforming challenge and make your way to the top and actually defeat the child's body. Uh, the child's not a threat. Again, you're not going to die the child unless you're playing on one-hit mode, which I love. 
Uh, you and all enemies die in one hit, uh, and then the child is just a menace, but in any percent, I, you can take as many hits as you want. It really doesn't matter. Uh, on assist, I, don't, I haven't done any, any, any harder difficulties yet, uh, and I'm sure the child becomes a nightmare there too. But um, This next spell is really, really good. This is the fireball or the bullet or the magic missile or the throw, whatever you want to call it. It's got a name in the game's code, but no name in the game, so people call it whatever they want. Uh, bullet does a lot of things. Uh, we're going to see the first one immediately here, and this is the most important. It's better movement. So if you bullet roll, that is, throw a bullet and you roll, uh, it's faster than roll jump slash, and it's faster than running. It's uh, extraordinarily good. The only downside is that you can only use as much as you have magic for, but that's fine. It only costs one bar of magic, unlike dive. Um, but it's also good for combat. It does as much damage as a sword swing, and it comes out very fast, so you can just weave it into your sword swings. And if you bullet enemies that are flashing, they get stunned. And then if you hit them, they get staggered, just like if you had locked them on. And again, a bullet comes out a lot faster than a lock-on, so that's very useful. This is the area before, right before the end of the game. I entered that room just to grab a gate. We'll be back here later. Uh, we're coming here early. There's a boss we have to kill because he opens a gate, but he also has an optional pickup behind him, the only one we want for any percent because it's extraordinarily good. Uh, Samurai has a really big sword. He'll send you flying across the screen if you do get hit, so you don't really want to get hit. That wastes a bunch of time. Um, and we also want to get him flashing pink. That is the flashing when you deal enough damage to him without taking hit, a hit because then, yeah, that attack that he was winding up, Oh, jeez. Yeah, see what I mean about getting flung into the air? Uh, okay. I need to not die here. Uh, I'm gonna be a little gentle here now. Oh, he's doing it again. Okay, so I actually need to play it slow now. This is a little unfortunate. Uh, he should be dead now, though. Yeah. So a little, yeah, a little, a little sloppy. Uh, but we survived, which is the goal here. Uh, what we just picked up behind him was a rune. It's the Risk Rune, uh, or the Lethal Rune, Danger Rune, whatever. Um, and we come here early just to get that. So runes, you can equip exactly one at tablets, but the lethal rune is the only one we get, so it doesn't matter. And uh, it's this one sets your health to one, or to one bar, which in assist is not usually a one-shot. Uh, and it also increases all your damage by 50%, which is enormous. Uh, I am going to try fun new tech here that was found literally this week. Let's see if we can grab it. Uh, I'm going to do it until it works. There it is. If you... <laughs> If you bullet roll in a specific location there, you just end up on the other side of that transition for some reason. Uh, people who understand how the game's code works talk about like the transition map. I don't understand it. I just press the buttons. Um, this next fight is Mother. Uh, this is the first one that we could actually die to. She throws two times of projectiles, red and green. Uh, the red ones home in on you and move pretty quickly. The green ones... Oh, my... Stop pressing buttons. I lost where my hands were. Uh, the green ones do not home in on you and move extremely slowly. So uh, we want to get a lot of greens. It's random which one she throws. We want to get a lot of greens, especially because we can hit them with the greens. We can hit with a sword, and it'll recharge our magic. Uh, the reds, we just have to dodge or bullet. Uh, if you bullet, they go away, but it's kind of hard to time with how they home in on you. And now we have our last spell, which is the spin, the up spell. This is our actual intended third jump. Uh, so now we have four jumps. Um, and now we can use the spin. It's really bad for combat, so we're just going to use it for the platforming in this area. Uh, it spins these windmills to make us go up, and also spinning all the windmills in a room opens these blocks. Uh, otherwise, this area is not super interesting. Uh, I am going to mention real quick that this, the tech I, I just uh, showed that was, displayed, that was found this week, the, the weird transition glitch, uh, was found by a casual player, Green Ender, who is friends with the speedrunner, and, and asked him, like, hey, is this, this seemed weird. Is this weird? Uh, and it was weird, and it saves a second if you do it optimally, which I didn't. But it will save a second once I actually have enough time to get consistent at it. So uh, if you're a casual player and you find a weird thing in a game, you know, throw it out to the speedrun community. There's a good chance it could be helpful. Uh, don't be scared. And with that, I'm just going to do platforming until the boss of the section. So we have some time for donations. Wonderful, because we got a great one here. We have one thousand dollars. Oh, coming from the beach. Yeah, oh. give it up, give it up. Saying, "Hey, glitchy, glitchiness, glitchyford, your family at the beach is so proud that your lawn mowing skills got you to GDQ. <laughs> Seeing you go from a speed running fan to a bona fide runner on the GDQ stage has been so exciting. We're all rooting for you from around the world." Oh, thank you. You're all very sweet. That's my friends I've been watching Games on Cloop with for almost a decade now. And uh, yeah, it's a very exciting to be here. It was a lot more interesting than that boss fight. That was the Ancient Warrior. Uh, none of his attacks are, again, going to 
like, uh, uh, even at risk for health, we're not going to die. The Ancient Warrior, probably, his attacks are all very easy to dodge uh, and or cancel. The one, the charge attack, uh, if you fireball him when he's charging, that's not the right key. If you fireball him when he's charging it up, he just cancels it. So uh, not really a threat. And we got our first orb. Uh, like I said, we need three of them to beat the game. And in addition, they each give a bar of magic, uh, which we want to get that. We want to get that bar of magic to have four for this section, uh, because we are going to want to do this. There we go. Uh, you want to, you want to get all four of your jumps. You want to get your dive. You want to get your spin. Uh, and since they both cost two in midair, we really need to do. We really need to have four bars. Uh, we get to skip all the actual puzzles except for this one. Uh, oh, a little late there, unfortunately. Uh, you can get all of the all four of these targets in one uh, one cycle, but just barely missed it there. Um, but that's the that's the only one we actually have to do in this section. So I actually have time for another donation. Wonderful. We have a three hundred dollar donation coming through from Anonymous that says, "Good luck on the run, Glitchy." Ah, thank you, Anonymous. If we have one time for one, sure, quick we can one. get one more. That was a pretty fast one. Yeah. So ten dollars comes from MTG Joe D, saying, "What a cool run to wake up to on my birthday! Stoked to have the day off to watch Glitchiness and all of the other awesome runners today." Thank you. All right, this is Yeri, uh, the boss of this section. Yeri has very predictable patterns once you learn Yeri's patterns, but Yeri, uh, funnily enough, punishes you a lot, and I killed it too far away to get the slow motion canceled. But Yeri punishes you a lot for just spamming the fireball that you got in this section. Uh, as far as I know, Yeri's the only boss that will stop what they're doing to deflect your fireballs. Uh, all bosses can deflect your projectiles if, uh, if they hit them, but uh, Yeri will stop their attack mid-attack and just uh, spin your fireball away if you do it at the wrong time. So it really, really values learning uh, Yari's patterns because uh, they do have some windows uh, to stun them. And then uh, we, they also recover out of their juggles pretty predictably, so I think I got a juggle reset there. Like I was mentioning earlier, how if uh, their recover uh, resets how much damage they're taking from juggles. Uh, now we're back in the dive area. Um, this boss, uh, I have never died to, even casually, and I hope, hope, hope that today is not the day. I'm actually, I played too scared there because I was so scared that would make today the day. Um, this is Father. Uh, he's got these big AoE attacks that are enormously telegraphed. Um, and he only has time for two before he dies. And if you are really efficient about DPS, only one before he dies. And it takes two to kill you. It's, uh, even at lethal rune health, so uh, not super scary. Uh, this whole section is just about using dive to bounce on these platforms and alternatively avoiding and going into portals. That skip uh, was found by uh, Xavier the 13th. You can go right over that wall above the screen. Uh, it's very funny. The wall just does not exist above the screen. Um, but, but yeah, we want to avoid... Generally, the purple portals will take you back to the start of the screen, uh, which is really, really bad. Um, and the other colors just transport you uh, to usually where you want to go. Um, this next boss here, we're going to not walk straight forward. Uh, we're going to turn around and go past this fake wall. Uh, this is the Deceiver coming up. And if we went straight forward, the Deceiver, uh, there'd be a fake boss there and it would just laugh at us and not be able to die. So we have to turn around here and actually kill the Deceiver. Uh, Deceiver's pretty straightforward. Uh, except I have no idea when she recovers from her juggles. I think it has to do with her height, but I have not figured out a consistent uh, timing for it. But we got her pretty easily, and now we're going to save quick back to that tablet we got before her and go grab our third and final orb. Um, with this orb, we can actually unlock the shrine behind the monk and go pick up the demon blade that we need to kill the demon. Uh, that last section is very long and a lot of platforming. It's um, it's probably about three or four minutes long, and it uses all of our spells to get around, and it also, you'll see in a second, uh, it adds one new mechanic, which is these floaty pink crystals. Uh, the, floaty crystal, the, the pink crystals give you floaty jump, and they give you infinite lock-on, and uh, it's the, your, your pink is canceled if you lock on, or if you wait too long, or, uh, which I think is a bug, if you... Oops, I have done this slightly wrong. Can I save it? Nope. Let's, uh, let's try the backup. Um, or if you uh, cancel a sword slash with a spell, which means we have to be careful about RJSing all over the place because we do not want to lose our purple when we shouldn't. Uh, we need it for these infinite lock-ons. 
Um, but this section is very tranquil, very soothing, not a lot happening before the next boss. So uh, this is going to be our last chance for donations, but we have quite a while, hopefully. All right. Well, Quacksilver donated $30 to say, Beyond psyched to see Glitchy on the Silver Speedrun screen and so grateful they inducted me and many others into the Catboy Samurai Club. <laughs> Good luck with this phenomenal game. I need you to go fast enough to explain the plot to me afterwards, so I'll donate <laughs> another $20 if you skip the sca staring contest rather in the final fight. Skip the staring contest in the final fight? I think that means that I... Oh, I understand, I understand. I thought that she meant that I would have to die because if you get into the scaring contest and lose, then you are dead. But if you go fast enough, you don't have to stare at all. And we'll see what that means. Anyway, sorry, continue. Absolutely, I'm excited to see what it means myself. Um, we have a $500 donation. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. Coming through from Sir Squatch, who said, I just wanted to say thanks for everything y'all do. These events are some of my favorite weeks of the year. Big same, uh, Sir Squatch. All right, do we have uh, time for one more? Yeah, one more or two more. One or given two more. Swiffing these targets. We gotcha. Five dollars coming in from roving underscore them saying Glitchy has been doing an amazing job. Twitch chat has been loving this run. Oh, that's great to hear. Thank you. Absolutely. And the one last one, OGD underscore A underscore K donates $100 saying love everything this event stands for. Look forward to it every year and it never disappoints. Keep it up, y'all. Thank you very much. All right, so this save uh, in actual an actual speedrun, you're not supposed to grab, or sorry, a world record attempt, let me say. This is an actual speedrun. In a world record attempt, you're not supposed to grab it because you're supposed to save quick back to that save in the dive area. Uh, but this boss, the monk, why are you fighting the monk? I won't tell you. Uh, this boss can one-shot you with that attack or with an attack in his second phase, uh, which we will probably see because, yeah, it's this one. If you hit him when he's flashing blue, he'll, uh, he'll stun you in place and one-shot you. That's a parry attack, so we have to not we have to not walk into that. Uh, there's, it's fairly generous on the timing, but I have died to it in a run before, so. Uh, but if you just dodge it, then he just sits on the ground, uh, leaving himself open. Uh, and with that, we have the Demon Blade. Um, again, we'd normally save put out here after picking it up. Instead, we're just going to break this beam of light, which is what the Demon Blade lets us do. Uh, it also gives us this fun, new, edgy outfit, which I love. Um, uh, but uh, the Demon Blade doesn't increase your damage. It just lets you kill the demon and break the beams of light. Uh, and the beams of light are what guard the palace to the to the final bosses. So, and we're gonna go there. This is this is the end of the game. We've got just a, uh, three bosses left, and I'm gonna take the safety save here because I have died to this boss uh, in runs before. Not in my practice, but you know, uh, this is where it will happen. Uh, this next boss is leader. Um, first, you have to kill one of his two lackeys that he spawns to actually make the leader spawn. Uh, usually, I kill the both of them because they're very annoying if you just leave them here. There's one. Uh, throw a bunch of fireballs over there. Uh, Leader himself doesn't do a lot of damage, so you can actually take many hits from Leader, uh, which again does not mean that you can't die. Uh, that this dash attack in particular is really hard to cancel because if you are too early, or sorry, if you're too late, then he'll just charge at you and knock back your bullet. I didn't get the slow motion cancel; kill him too far away, unfortunately. Um, but he'll just knock back your bullet, and then uh, you'll be sad. This is a rune that we're not getting. And we're coming up to the actual demon fight now. Um, the demon fight, so the demon's got the same three attacks as before. That's the, the hand that grabs you. You can break out of it if you mash buttons. Uh, fireballs that target you, they don't do very much damage. And lightning that's just on the field and one-shots you. In the second phase is the worst attack. Uh, it's ping pong. Uh, if we're really lucky, we may not see it, but we'll probably see it. Um, and so I'll talk about it when we see it. But first, we'll just bullet roll into the fight, pile bullets into the demon before the fight even starts. Uh, and when the demon's vulnerable, it's also hard to tell. It's the tail. The tail color is, is how you can tell the demon's vulnerable. And I have a lot of trouble. Uh, I miss all those. I have a lot of trouble telling when the demon's actually vulnerable. Oh my god, I didn't get a bullet. I didn't get a ping pong phase. Wow, holy moly. Um, I, so I guess I have to actually talk about ping pong. Basically, the demon pushes you away and uh, pulls out a big old orb of light, and you have to knock the orb of light back at it. Uh, if you miss, uh, you die, and... It takes way too long. Um, it's no fun. And if you get cornered uh, at the start, you just do not have enough time. Uh, this is the final boss. So time is when this boss hits the ground after dying and the screen cuts to black. This is Rebirth, uh, the demon reborn into physical form. And here's the staring contest. Said she did it immediately. Uh, it's another parry. You have to just sit here until she flashes vulnerable. Uh, and if we may be able to juggle her, no, I find it easier in the third phase to juggle her than in the second phase. Um, 
Yeah, actually staggering demon, or sorry, rebirth is uh is tricky because it's also hard to count. Like so, when she swings like and teleports like that, um, she only flashes vulnerable after a certain amount of them. But it how that amount is dependent on what phase she's in. Ah, uh, here's the juggle, uh, and if she changes phases mid time, uh, if she changes phases mid um mid com mid, mid that attack, then I lose count and it's impossible. Uh, we have one last unskippable cutscene before we see our final in-game time, so I'm going to do some quick shoutouts. Uh, of course, shoutouts to the Auto Speedrun community. Go to speedrun.com slash auto, join the Discord, play the game. Uh, it's a great game uh, with great people. Follow everyone on the leaderboard. I uh, can't possibly name them all, but there's Fonz, who wrote an incredible any percent guide. There's Cupcakes, who is a current dev for the game and speedruns it and helps us a lot with our community, which you love to see a dev help the speedrun community. Um, Hokatate found the major glitch that I don't use, so go watch the list run, see what that is. Um, but but thanks to all of them. Follow all of them. They're all amazing. Um, Octo is just a god at the game. They're all amazing. Um, uh, shout out to all my friends who donated. I love all of you. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm so happy to be here. And of course, thank you to, to Rhea, uh, who also donated and stitched this incredible shin mask for me. Uh, it's so cute. Shin's great. Um, uh, I love you. Thank you so much. And that's Otto. Our final time is just barely 24 minutes, but I'll take it. Thanks for watching. Wow, just, just an incredible showcase from Glitchiness on that run of Auto. And I have to agree with this next donation, uh, with Nubles donating $50, saying, love finding speedruns about games I've never heard about. Thanks to everyone making this event possible, especially the people behind the scenes. All right, and we are going to take a quick little stretch break. Everyone, uh, get up, get some water, whatever it is you need to do, and we'll see you on the other side.